Hi, my name's Shane. I use she, her pronouns, and this is a game of The Between, Jason Cordova's game about uh, monster hunters in Victorian England. Uh, this session was organised through the Gauntlet Gaming Calendar, and if you don't know, the Gauntlet is an online community that organises and plays a whole lot of uh, role-playing games, especially story games, indie games, and OSR games. I will ask now uh, the players to introduce themselves. So a couple of our regular players are away this week, but we're excited to have Kyle jumping in as special guest star Cecile. Uh, we'll hear a little bit more about Cecile in just a sec. Um, so I'll go just go around the order that I can see you on my screen, and I'll ask you to introduce yourselves, like who you are, your, your name and pronouns, anything you want to tell us about yourself, uh, and also your character's name and pronouns, um, a little bit about them. Um, just to bear in mind again, especially for Kyle uh, coming in new, in this game you are explicitly discouraged from talking about your character's backstory, uh, except where the rules explicitly invite you to do so. So introducing your character without telling us anything about what's happened to them before, maybe a little bit of a, a challenge compared to some other games. Um, but yeah, that, that's what we're looking for. So Blake, are you okay to lead off? Sure thing. Uh, g'day, I'm Blake, he, him, I'm playing Helena Henbury, the she, her, who is the vessel, which is like the group's psychic or mystic wizard, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, Joel? Yeah, hi, I'm Joel, uh, he, him pronouns. I am playing Reeves, who uses she, her pronouns. Uh, she is the factotum, so she's kind of the employee of uh, the mother who's not able to make it today, uh, Malik El Kabir. Cool. And Kyle. Um, I'm Kyle. He, they. I'm playing uh, Cecile, she, her, who is uh, probably some of the funding behind the group, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, doesn't um, actually show up much. I think she was probably away in like France or something until uh, just before the session. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, yeah, let's keep it a little vague about where exactly Cecile has been. Um, so, the um, just want to flag before we start that we are using a set of safety tools. Um, Kyle, did you get a chance to take a look at the list of lines and veils in the safety tab? Uh, I did. Uh, I didn't add, add anything. It, it looked good. Okay. All right. Um, so just a reminder to everyone, we do have that list of lines and veils and ask first uh, topics. Uh, reacquaint yourselves with those if you're uh, not sure what's there. Um, we're also using the X card. So if anything comes up in the game that's uncomfortable or just not fun for you, um, you're welcome to just tell us that you're going to X card it uh, verbally or in the chat or however else. Uh, we'll just remove that content. It's, it's not a problem at all. And we also have the open door. So if you need to leave, um, either just for a temporary break or because you're you're gone and you're not coming back, that's that's totally fine. Uh, if you can tell us that's happening, that would be great. But if you just need to leave, that's okay too. Uh, we're also playing under the Gauntlet Community Code of Conduct. Uh, I think that's all I need to say about safety tools that we're using. Um, obviously, if you have any questions about safety or anything comes up during the game, you can also just ask questions. Um, so just before we get started, Carl, can I just ask, like, have you played The Between before? How familiar are you with it? Or uh, I have not. Okay. Uh, I've, I've looked at the rule book. It, it looks a lot like uh, Brindlewood Bay. So I, I think yeah. I, I get the system. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start just by talking briefly over where we're at in the story, like especially uh, to bring Kyle up to speed. Um, but for everyone else as well. Um, Joel, you weren't here last session either, so uh, hopefully helpful for you. Um, probably helpful if you navigate to the Threats tab in the Character Keeper. Um, so uh, if you scroll across to the right, so you've neutralised the St. James Street Ghost and the Limehouse Lurker, but right now there are three active threats that you're trying to deal with, uh, and those are Figs Pigs, The Coven, and Sally No Face. Um, so just to talk through those briefly, Figs Pigs is about a group of cannibal pie makers. Um, there are three of them on the loose, and each of them has an associated uh, two point two complexity two question um, that you can uh, resolve. And when you answer one of those questions, it unlocks the opportunity that's listed under it in the character keeper. So if you look at Figs Pigs, um, I'm just going to mark that one as solved because the uh, hunters did did answer that question 
in the last session. We know that Patrick Fig thinks he is an owl, uh, and you can use that information to lure him out into the open and then capture or destroy him. Um, the second threat that's active at the moment is the coven. Uh, we know that the coven are a group of mysterious, powerful, and very evil uh, individuals who have a plan to what would you say, to, to bring about the vampire apocalypse and destroy all of London. Uh, if five more nights pass before you solve that threat, then they will begin their grand ritual and that will be a bad time for all involved. Um, they are also quite powerful magically and we'll come back to, uh, to some of the effects of their magic uh, in just a sec. Um, you're doing quite well for clues on them. You've, you've collected five clues that you haven't used them yet. And it's a complexity six question to, to deal with them. Uh, the other threat that got introduced last time, which you haven't, you haven't actually made any progress on, but it is active, is Sally No Face. Uh, Sally is a mysterious serial killer known for removing the faces of his or her victims. Um, so that's the kind of uh, stuff that's going on at the moment. We're going to start late in the afternoon. Uh, Carl, the, the game is organised into phases that correspond into parts of the day, so we're just late in the day phase at the moment. We'll move into the dusk phase in a little bit. Uh, Dr. Malik and the liar Jim Fletcher have headed off on their own to try and deal with Fig's pigs. Um, I guess we'll find out next time when those two players are back what exactly has become of them. But meanwhile... Uh, Carl, we'll introduce Cecile in just a little bit, but I just want to have a, an opportunity first for Helena and Reeves. Um, you find yourselves both at Hargrave House. Uh, Reeves, you are sort of recovering after spending quite a bit of time vomiting up rats and other pests, uh, an, an effect of the Coven's Hexcraft. Helena, you also have been a victim of the Coven's Hexcraft, as well as, you know, more generally having a history with them. So I wonder what Helena and Reeves are talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, in, in Hargrave House, late in the afternoon, um, what, do you, what do you say to each other or what are you thinking of doing? I'll, I'll say, you know, Reeves, how, how are you feeling? Are you doing okay? Uh, and I think, like, Reeves has been walking around with just extra strength, like mouthwash, just like high concentrated <laughs> disinfectant is just looking at and like spinning another cup. Um, it says like, I, I'm recovering at least. Um, I would prefer that doesn't happen again. I don't you know, yeah. you know about this sort of thing. Is there anything we can do to protect this house from it? Uh, the house is protected, but if we go out of it, then we can be targeted and, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can't stay home all day, you know. Yeah. Um, so at this point, you both notice that Cecile has arrived. Um, you both know Cecile. Uh, she's, a, she's a hunter like the rest of you. Um, you haven't seen her for some time. Cecile, I would like to propose that the reason you've come back now is that you are also concerned in particular about the coven. You know, certainly happy to investigate other threats if that's what's decided, but you also have stumbled upon this plot to usher in the vampire apocalypse upon London. Um, Sounds good. So what will you, how, what do you, how do you want to make your entrance? Uh, I, I think I just, like throw out, open the doors, uh, like, march in with a couple people, like, porters carrying my bags with me, like, oh, Helena Reeves, yes, you're here, wonderful. I hear London's going absolutely to the dogs, or should I say the bats? <laughs> <coughs> Helena will chuckle and say, that's, that's the understatement of the year, but yes, yes, we can, we can certainly use your help. Your arrival is fortuitous, to say the least. Uh, we all do what we can. And I believe your room is still made up for you. I'll make sure your stuff get there, and like Reeves would kind of show the porters where to put stuff. Lovely. So just to clarify in terms of like the, the leads that you have, um, 
so you know of a couple of places the Coven have been in their guise as sort of innocent, spooky fortune tellers. Um, you've already investigated Rutland Gardens, uh, but you also know of a couple of other, you know, sort of well-to-do uh, homes that they've yeah, visited. Rotten Road to... and Muscovic Place or something? Yeah, Boscobel Place. Um, yeah, Helena spent some time uh, earlier in this this day of game time uh, sort of asking around after them. I think you'll also have found that they visited the British Museum, sorry, the, the British Library, uh, spent some, some time in the library and that might be another place that you can investigate a little. Uh, yeah, so we have actually been asked by Scotland Yard to look into this. So we could, um, you know, go to one or more of these places and say, look, you know, we've been asked by Scotland Yard to have a look around. Let's, you know, we just need to have a look. We won't disturb you, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, unless someone's got a better idea. Sorry, just for clarity, uh, it's figs, pigs that Scotland Yard has asked you to investigate, but, but maybe oh, okay. that cover. Maybe you can wield that cover in other locations. Why the hell not? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a bit fast and loose here at the Hard Rock House. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might not be a bad idea to stick together since, you know, they can kind of affect well, us with these hexes yeah, at well, any time. Yeah, I'll say, we'll um, fill in Cecile with that. Say, Cecile, uh, there's a group of nasty witches or some sort of creatures. Or, anyway, they've been... Uh, doing evil magic against us. They hexed my hand. They made poor Reeves here cough up rats. It's yeah, we, we're under attack. We need to deal with this this threat. Um, oh, that's ghastly. Let's let's yes, I'll, I'll go and help. With you. All right. So where are you going to go? Um, or do you want to just move into the dusk phase and then we can make plans for tonight and you can do some investigating uh, after dark. Does that work for everyone? I'm happy either way. All right. Well, yeah, let's just uh, pop on into the uh, the dusk phase. Oops, where are we? Just a jump to the left. Yes. Uh, so the dusk phase. In the dusk phase, so you collect rewards if a threat was resolved. Um, there were no threats resolved last time, so no rewards will be... Oh, sorry, that's for Dawn. I was looking at the wrong spot. Um, Resolve any playbook moves or custom moves that are resolved during the dusk phase. Um, Helena, do you have any dusk phase moves? Uh, I don't nope. think that you do. Nope. Nope. All right. uh, I think Reeves is the only one who has a, a dusk phase move. Um, yeah. Um, I have the Ghost of Hargrave House. So during the dusk phase, you can remove a marked item from another hunter's personal quarters and add it to your own unmarked. And then the item is changed in some small way by the ghosts of the house. So I think, does Helena have any marked items that we can get back to you? Oh, I still have your amulets. I need to get that back to you. Is salt in your uh, yeah. personal quarters? Okay. But the amulet's probably more narratively <laughs> handy at this point. Yeah. I think I got them from you. Oh, wait, no, I ended up, I used them after I took them from you. I'll say <laughs> amulets again. Um, and like last time the chains had all been swapped out. So like gold ones were swapped out for silver. Um, some of the like twine ones were swapped out. And now this time, any amulets that have like pictures in them, the, yep. like any photos have been basically inverted. It's like the negatives are used instead of the photos. So I think they would have had like very rudimentary flash photography. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's some fr freaky shit going on my amulets. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we'll actually be coming to a threat that involves a camera uh, in not too long. So there is definitely <laughs> photography. Cool. No. Yeah, yeah, I looked up that Memento Mores time. I thought, oh, that's my carb shit. That is. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right. So the next thing that we do in the dusk phase is that I'm going to ask a paint the scene question about one of the rooms in Hargrave House. Uh, today it's going to be about the music room. So I will ask you all to answer this one by one. Uh, 
A former hunter in residence once used the music room to wrangle a spirit using the power of music. There are still subtle signs of the struggle in this room. What are they? Uh, Helena, can I get you to go first? Subtle signs of the struggle. Um, the, like the, the, the fixtures, the cornices along the ceiling and the floor are being warped by either heat or cold, just rapid temperature changes where the spirit was phasing in and out of our reality. Mm -hmm. as you know the person was mad and playing the piano or whatever it was um so yeah rapid temperature distortion in like you know this spot it's one foot over there it's like three foot wide and yeah because they were changing sides as they were coming through and, yeah right nice. and it just can't be fixed whatever someone tries to fix it an accident happens excellent uh reeves what, what about you um there is <clears throat> like a couch and um, you know, kind of like a lounge chair for listening to the music and kind of like lounging and relaxing. And there's a fur rug on the ground where the fur always changes position, no matter how much you like try to comb it one way or move it one way, it'll like change positions to mimic. Um, something like significant to the spirit maybe like it mimics hands like trying to reach the fur almost nice um cecile what about you uh i think if you spend any time in the the room like you'll pretty quickly get like the the, the tune the hunter used to find the spirits just like stuck in your head like even if you've never heard it before you'll just find yourself humming along nice the um and you know a fair bit about music, so do you find? How do you find that? Uh, I I avoid the room like the plague. I have my own very special song. I do not like mm -hmm. it being contaminated. Fair, fair. Um, all right. So the next thing we do in the night phase, sorry, in the dusk phase, is that all of you declare what you're going to be doing during the night phase. Um, so. Uh, again, just to, Carl, to, to clarify, the night phase moves pretty quickly. Um, we'll frame scenes pretty hard. The The night phase is the only time that you can actually resolve the threats. Uh, but at the moment, you're not in a position to resolve any threats because you haven't answered the questions that would allow you to do that. So probably it's more likely that you'll continue investigating. Uh, maybe you'll get a chance to uh, resolve a threat later in the night, depending on how things play out. But uh, does anyone have an idea of what you want to do in the night phase? Uh, yeah, I'd like to go to Brompton Road and have a chat. So, you know, we've been asked to escape the house of Scotland Yard and just have a look around. We won't harm anyone and, yeah, just cool. visit them and have a chat. Um, is everyone happy to do that or at least to start off by going to Brompton Road or do either of you want to do something different? No, I All think right. we've that's good. Cool. So we finished the night phase. I am going to read out uh, a prompt for one of the unseens. So uh, this is probably the most unfamiliar element of the game uh, if you haven't played it before. If you turned to the London at night, the unseen tab in the keeper, um, tonight we're going to use the night shift at St. Thomas's, uh, which is which starts at G1, if you want to read along. Um, the night shift at St. Thomas's. Sitting across the Thames from the Palace at Westminster, St Thomas's Hospital is London's newest hospital, purpose-built to the most modern standards of medicine. It consists of sprawling wings joined by covered walkways, allowing convalescent patients to take the air during the day. But at night, a skeleton crew struggle to save their charges from the illness, accidents and violence that stalk the gloom. Here, we're going to move into the night phase. And the way this works is I'm going to ask each of you in turn as we go through the night phase to read and then answer uh, one of those uh, questions. So, uh, Helena, I'll get you to go first if you could read the first of the questions under Night Shift at St. Thomas's. Okay. Uh, a destitute, uh, sorry, destitute woman is in the throes of a complicated birth, a porter holding her down while a surgeon begins to operate. How do we know that the child will never meet their birth mother? Oh, Jesus, that's dark. Off <laughs> <laughs> um, to a great start. Uh, 
it's coming out of feet first so that pretty kind of yeah and her her breathing is irregular it, it's not you know, she can't get her breathing right and it's coming out feet first and it's just it's not working yeah damn all right so here we go into uh just regular scenes um Kyle, just so you know, one of the ideas here probably doesn't matter so much for you because you're only here for one session, but one of the ways you can get XP is by triggering an echo in the night, which is to reintroduce uh, an image or a theme from the, the unseen narration uh, into the main game. Um, so you might see how that plays out. All right, so it's dark, you've arrived, um, I assume not too late at night or, well, let me ask that, I guess. Helena, what sort of time of night do you arrive at Brompton? Oh, yeah, seven. We're not late yeah. night, I guess. All it's right, just... sure. Um, so you find a sort of bright and airy apartment, sorry, house, uh, lots of family portraits, thick rugs. Um, I'll ask you all, Mrs. Crawley, who lives here, is a consummate entertainer. Uh, looking around the living room, uh, how do you know this? Uh, Helena? Um, she's got those, well, I think they're wax tubes or something. It's like the thing that came before the record oh, player. Yeah, um, nice. She's got like a shelf, big, big pile of them. And one's proudly displayed on the mantelpiece or something. Nice. Um, Reeves? Um, she has a lot of like spots for appetizer trays pre-set up that Reeves can kind of tell like that's where she would send, um, you know, like house workers too to like set up the appetizers. Yeah, nice. And Cecile? Uh, I think she has all the very latest uh, styles of furniture and, and uh, curtains, that sort of thing, which are, you know, fairly expensive to keep replacing and cur current. Yeah, everything here is clearly very expensive, uh, including, well, including everything that you see on Timotea Blanchard herself. Uh, she has pursed lips, her corset is drawn a little bit too tight. Um, she awkwardly tries to conceal the bead of sweat that's rolling down her forehead. Um, she tells you, you know, you, well, sorry, what, what's the approach here? Are you asking her outright about the Fellowship of Dreamers, which is what the, the Coven are calling themselves, or how do you approach her? Uh, yeah, I just, I'm we've been asked to we heard there was a, a seance the other night and things went a bit weird so we, you know, we've been asked by scotland yard to have a look but you know we're not here to damage anything we're not here to get you in trouble we're just curious about the you know fellowship of dreamers and yeah well i can't say i'm too surprised i mean I would normally never be seen commiserating with actors and circus folk. I sh should have known Scotland Yard would become involved and, well, whoever you all are. Uh, but I don't know that there's much that I could tell you. Uh, Helena, do you want to roll the information move here? Uh, yeah. Also, you know, we're from Hargrave House and we're just here to uh, have a look around if it's no trouble. That way. She looks... She looks pretty icy at the suggestion that you will look around her house, but she, you know, defers to your authority. Well, so, you know, it, it's better we have a, a quick look rather than get the rest of Scotland Yard involved because they don't know how to treat nice places like this. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm trying to appeal, you know, be one uh -huh. of the velvet glove, not the iron gauntlet sort of thing. Sure. Uh, so in, in terms of finding clues, are you wanting to, to like, ask her and see what she can tell you, or are you wanting to, to sort of look around more for physical signs? Um, I want to look around, because I've got sensitivity three, so I think I want to actually get in there and... Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. Um, so, can, sorry, can I get someone to post the dice roller in the chat? Because I do not have it open. Uh, great. Thank you. Uh, and is there anywhere in particular that you're going to look for these things? These oh, well, last year, where was the seance uh, held? All right. So, yeah, she'll she'll indicate the parlour. Okay, cool. Uh, so we, we certainly don't need to look in bedrooms or anything like that. We, you know. oh, I should hope not. 
Well, go ahead and uh, roll. You were saying you were going to sort of use sensitivity to try and like sense yeah. what's happened here. Just take a okay. deep breath in and look around the room. <laughs> okay, right. let's go. Yeah, let's see if this is going to work. Oh, nice. Nashville. All right, so All right. we will come back and see what you. Oh, no. Oh, we oh. lost Kyle. All right, well, hopefully, Kyle will be back momentarily. Um, oh, here we go. I just let him back in. Sorry. Uh, we lost, that's all right. We lost you there for a sec. Um, all good. All right. Um, Reeves, what do you do as Helena heads off to, uh, look around the parlor? Um, I think Reeves would kind of say to her, like, we will, of course, try to be quick here, but it may take some time. Um, so you might want to sit down for a moment. Would you like me to make you some tea while you wait? Oh, that is very kind of you. Well, please. And she begins to relay her extremely precise specifications for her her evening tea. Mm -hmm. And Ruth takes it, like, very professionally, but, like, her jaw's just starting to, like, tighten a little bit more, a little bit more. <laughs> and it's like, of course, ma'am. Um, it'll take me a moment to find my way around your kitchen, so um, I'll be a little longer, but I'll try not to make you wait too long. Of course, it's very kind. Uh, and then, and then what? Are you going to look for clues in the kitchen, or what's the plan? Talk to a yeah. servant, perhaps? Yeah, uh, you know, in the middle of, like, making tea, because, you know, she's got a job to do. Um, also, like, look for clues, um, you know, any of the fishy stuff that I'm sure Helena may have said, you know, keep an eye out for X, Y, Z. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. like the type of stuff Covens would have. Cool. Um, all right. Well, do you want to roll with reason, maybe? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, oh, God. That is a Ooh. four. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll come back and see what you find in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um Cecile, do you go with either of the other hunters or what do you do as they sort of wander off to start investigating? Uh, I think I'm going to stay uh, talking to, to her just to keep her distracted and try to try to get information from her, but mostly just uh, give them time to work. Yeah, I mean, I think she'll like cotton to you quite well because you're, you're clearly of her social class. Um, the... Is there anything in particular that you want to talk to her about or you're just trying to get her comfortable so she'll let something slip? I think I'll try to like see what the uh, see what she knows about like the whole seance fad. I guess that's going through London right now. Like, does she know a lot? Other other people who've been hosting, just any mm -hmm. anything like that? Yep. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll the information move with presence, uh, which covers you know the sort of social interaction. I got a nine. Nine. Okay. So that's going to be a, a, a clue, but with a complication or cost. Um, so we'll come back and resolve all of those moves that you've rolled, but we're going to do our second night scene prompt first. So uh, Reeves, I'll get you to take the second one if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so in the casualty waiting room, the experienced board sister, Mary O'Brien, triages the sick and wounded. Who does she see, and will they live or die? Hmm. Um, I think she sees um, a local priest who's kind of been helping out with um, outreach stuff and kind of helping, like, the homeless and the poor, um, you know, helping to like, clothe and feed them. And, you know, some of the illness going around, uh, they had caught it also. And I think I will say he will not be making it through the night. Um, I think she kind of sees him, kind of sees, like, some of the signs that, like, he's not going to make it and politely, like, asks him, you know, says, um, I think there's some people over here that may 
you know, need your services and kind of brings him to like the area of the triage place where, you know, the people aren't going to make it and like has him help them knowing he's also not going to make it. Nice. All right. So we will come back to uh, Brompton Road where Helena, you have uh, headed into the parlor where you know that the, uh, the seance took place. And as you open your senses, you notice a couple of things. Let's see. The first is, you know, you sort of, you walk into this room, you take a look around, you sort of open your, your psychic uh, senses. At first, nothing seems to have happened. But then you notice uh, there is a large portrait of uh, one of the notable ancestors of the Blanchard family uh, prominently displayed in this room. And when you came in, uh, she was just sitting nicely for a portrait or, or had been when the portrait was painted. Now you notice that she is holding up a length of rope between her two hands. Uh, you're sure that it didn't look like that when you came in. But you also find something else. What will you find? Because your 12 on the roll gets you a mastermind clue as well. Uh, maybe I will hold off your mastermind clue for now and give it to you a little later, if that's okay. All right, so do I write down about the painting and the clue? Yeah, so the, the painting is a clue for the coven, that's right. Um, and then what will you do next? If there's any adjoining room, Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I'm sort of not being watched. I'll go and do the same thing. I just sort of take a couple of seconds, take a big breath, and just try and feel the, the vibes of the room. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and roll the information move again. The peanuts. All right. Uh, so right. a clue with a complication. We'll come back to that. Um, Miss Reeves, I think that we'll come back to you last for this one because you rolled the miss. Um, Cecile, in the kitchen, what do you find? So you find a clue, but there's a complication. Uh, sorry, no, you weren't in the kitchen. You were continuing, you were talking to, uh, to uh, Mrs. Blanchard. Mm -hmm. um, so, Mrs. Blanchard, you know, she she goes over, you know, some of the things that you already know about this this seance fad, the fortune tellers, the places they've been, the people who claim to have hired them but really hired some lesser impersonator. You know, she has all the gossip about things like that. Um, she tells you in the course of this that, that the strangest thing about all of this is that she's talked to uh, to Mr. Baines, who also hosted the circle, and both of us, since the since their their seances, the strangest thing, our dogs will not walk to the east. Uh, that's the clue that you get. Um, as oh, I dropped my pen. Sorry. <laughs> as you um, as she says those words, the uh the dogs refuse to walk to the east, a thick black bile starts to dribble from her mouth. Uh, she doesn't seem aware that it's happening, but it's thick and viscid and it bubbles as it uh, pours out of her mouth, down her chin and onto her nice dress. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to assume I'm hallucinating and try to keep calm and not react. All right. Well, that sounds like it might be the night move when you face something, do something risky, or face what you fear. Um, what will you? What are you afraid will happen if you lose your nerve? Uh, that I'll make a scene and embarrass myself. I'm, you know, trying to preserve my reputation in society. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to tell you how it's worse than you fear. Um, if you cause a scene here. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think I have a good one for this. Does anyone have a suggestion about how it's worse than that? Um, it could be coming out of her mouth as well. <laughs> yes. 
That is fantastic. Thank you, Blake. Um, all right. You'll realize that it's coming out of your mouth as well. Um, so roll with an appropriate ability, probably composure for this one. Uh, I, I think so, yeah. So that's, oof, that's zero for me, so. Oh, got a 10. It's a 10. All right, so you hold it together. You don't say anything as bile pours from her mouth. Um, and we'll come back and see what happens next uh, in just a sec. Um, 10 on the night move. Okay. Um, so, Miss Reeves, uh, as you um, sort of, you know, hunt around, you know, you've got the tea, you've got the kettle on, hunting around the kitchen, um, you, you know, you're, you're not really seeing any of the things that you hoped you might see. Um, hard even to find the, the tea cabinet because it's such a, a vast kitchen, so many nooks and crannies and cupboards and pantries. Um, but at one point you turn around and you are very surprised to see an old woman with a veiled face standing immediately in front of you. And she whispers something in Latin before she claws out at your face with her hard yellow nails. Uh, what will you do? Um, oh God. I think... Uh, Miss Reeves has her, like, uh, walking stick with the... Mm -hmm. I want to say it was like a bird head on it. She has kind of, like instinctively you know puts it between her and the older woman and like tries and pushes her away with it before even realizing this might be another employee of the house this might not be like, <laughs> i don't think like, she's no i don't think yeah. she considers for a second that this could be an okay. employee yeah, like you can almost kinda... feel the rat in your throat as this woman appears before you uh in that case like if she can tell that aspect she is definitely using the protection amulets that she okay. has still kind of the ghosts have given to her from Helena and just like holds them out in front of her. Okay. Well, that'll be the night move as well. Um, okay. What are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve? Um, the rats will come back and they won't stop. The, um, <laughs> so it is worse than you think. Um, this time the rats will still like be released from your body but not through your mouth. They are. <laughs> okay. They are. Uh, so go ahead and roll. Uh, I would, I mean, I guess either composure or sensitivity makes sense here. Okay. I think I will do composure. Uh, that is a nine total. All right. Um, so you do it or hold steady, but there is a complication or cost. The keeper describes what it looks like. All right. So um, the protection amulet, amulet clearly, like, you know, she, she staggers back. Um, you've at least bought yourself some time, but not before she manages to lash out and, and lacerate your face uh, with one of those horrible yellowed fingernails. So a condition, yeah, maybe lacerated cheek, something like that. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, sorry. I should have saved that for after the next unseen prompt, but we'll go with that anyway. Um, so we will go to our third night scene prompt. So Cecile, I'll get you to read this one. Um, the third one under night shift at St. Thomas's. Uh, all right. Uh, the young nurse Agnes Pell walks the tuberculosis ward, silent but for the labored breathing and hacking coughs of her charges. Who do we see among the gaunt, pale patients that show death respects neither age nor rank? Uh, I think we probably see someone from Parliament here, like some like, uh, big, important person from the House of Lords. Nice. Yeah. So just in terms of like having material that you can reincorporate for an echo in the night, do you want to like flesh out the scene a little more? Like what do we see of his deathbed? Yeah, I think um, even here he's like surrounded by like, you know, he brought fancy 
gilded pillows with like golden threads and uh, like really expensive silk blankets. And he's just sort of uh, hacking up blood on the finery. Nice. So we'll come back to Brompton Road. And I just want to check in first with Miss Reeves. So do you, do you call for help? Like, are you doing this silently? What, what happens is this, you know, this uh, witch rears back? Um, I think she is immediately calling for Helena because, like, yeah. in her mind, any of that like weird magic stuff, that's Helena. So, All right. uh, yeah, she's just like shouting her name. All right, so we'll come back to the scene in the kitchen. Um, but first of all, um, Helena, oh, sorry, Helena, you uh, found a clue uh, in the second room that you wandered into, um, the the second of the the parlors of the house. Um, Again, nothing in there that was immediately apparent to your, your you know, human senses, but when you uh, let your spirit roam a little, um, what appeared to you was a slick of a sort of purplish goo uh, on the floor. Um, if you tried to wipe it up or anything like that, you noticed that it immediately reappeared, that it, it could not be cleaned away. And after just a moment of that, uh, you hear... Miss Reeves, call your name uh, from the kitchen, clearly in some distress. What do you do? Uh, run in there, talk tilt. All right. So we'll catch up with the kitchen scene, but I just want to check in with Seal first. Um, so uh, you have held it together. Um, you haven't uh, noticed the, the bile uh, well, sorry, you, you haven't acknowledged that you've noticed the bile dripping down Mrs. Blanchard's face. Uh, and suddenly you hear Miss Reeves call out from the kitchen for Helena. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to... I want to get out of this room, so I'll just stand up and like, <laughs> oh, oh, Reeves, she's such a dear girl, but oh, she gets overwhelmed. I'll, I'll go give her a hand. You, you stay right here. Uh, so Mrs. Blanchard will not stay right there. She's going to get up and follow you, uh, leaking black bile all over the carpets and rugs. Um, but the the two of you arrive in the kitchen just in time to see that uh, this veiled older woman, um, clearly a member of the coven, there's no doubt in any of your minds about that, um, has been, you know, she had been repelled by the protection amulets, but at this point, um, she has just, as you come in, managed to cast some spell to weaken their effect, and now she lunges forward at Reeves again. Uh, Reeves, what do you do? Um, I think realizing like the amulets aren't really working, just kind of throws them to the side and. Probably, like, her uh, walking stick that she has with the bird head just grabs it and is ready to use it like a baseball bat and just start, you know, swinging in self-defense. All right, we'll make the night move. Okay. Probably vitality, I'm guessing. Yeah. What are you afraid will happen if you fail? Um, that Reeves will miss and the witch will, like, claw her face again. Um, it's worse than you fear because she won't use her hands again. Uh, it will be something magical and terrible. But uh, go ahead and roll with vitality. Okay. That is a 12. Nice. Um, on a 12+, plus, you do what you intended or you hold steady, and the Keeper will tell you some extra benefit or advantage you receive. Um, do you have an idea of what sort of benefit or advantage you'd like in this moment? Um. If anything, maybe Reeves kind of like rears back and takes a big swing and we'll say to bring back to the unseen, like it hits the witch in the face and she was kind of coughing blood just like the parliament member was. Yeah, um, nice. You know, on all the like fine curtains in this house. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe like that blow to the face just affects how she's able to speak. And so she is yeah. able to like enunciate to cast spells as easily. Yeah. So she definitely like staggers back. She's clutching her face. She's she's hurt. She's on the ropes a little bit. Uh, Helena, what do you do? Um, 
I'm going to try my lots of smoke, uh, salt and smoke. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm screaming out stuff in ancient Greek. Now, can I say that this cameo pendant, which is someone else's picture, is this witch's face? I didn't know oh. it until I saw her. Then I'm like, I've been hanging on to this thing for like seven years, and now I know what it's for. <laughs> yes. You just barely notice through the veil that covers her face. Mm. Um, uh, okay, so roll with sensitivity. Okay. Now, do I get advantage because I'm tagging an item from my yeah. personal... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. I should have smashed it to the amount of dice I've got. Uh, four and it's four eight, and three. Eleven. So eleven. Ten. All right. Um, so you do what you intend or hold steady. So what is it that you were doing there? Which of the effects are uh, yeah. you conjuring? The, I'm trying to banish her. Um, yeah, banish the spirit from this place. Okay. Uh, if we go you know, what we did with the vampire, we can say it's until the next new moon. Well, but this time you've rolled a ten, so you will, you will effectively banish her, the, yeah, uh, or right, the sorry, the, or the spirit of her that that's here. Um, Cecile, you see that Helena has, you know, managed to to cast some magic. Um, you sense that it was effective. Um, you have an opportunity to to do something before the witch vanishes if you want. But what do you want to do here? Uh... Mrs. Blanchard is also uh, clearly on your heels. She'll be in the room in just a moment as well. I think I'm going to uh, faint backwards on Miss Blanchard to try to keep her out of the room. All right. Um, yeah, I think that you can do that. You, do, you don't necessarily need to roll for that. Um, you'll get some bile on you, but maybe that's okay. Um, Miss Reeves probably will be the one who has to clean that off, so... Uh, all right, let's have our last unseen prompt then. Um, so this is a paint the scene question. So this will be a question for all of you. Uh, Blake, can you read that one out? Okay, so as dawn begins to break, how do we see the staff dealing with the stress of the night before, uh, knowing they will be back again soon? Uh, all right, so the doctor's giving them to heroin or cocaine or whatever. Yeah, they're, they're in a side room and they're passing the needle around to shoot themselves up. Probably cocaine to stay awake. Nice. Uh, Ms. Reeves? Um, you see some of the kind of orderlies in between, um, you know, and taking a patient and then waiting outside for like, the next patient to come. They're just having a quick... Um, you know, smoke break in between patients, kind of very rushed, maybe gets through like half a cigarette before they have to put it out and then deal with the next patient that comes up. Nice. Um, and Cecile? Uh, I think we see like a one young nurse just sort of duck into a side room and just uh, take out like a small little music box that plays some pretty little tune just to like relax for a second nice. um so back in the kitchen uh the witch vanishes in some sort of purple light or uh, helena do you want to describe how the banishment takes effect um yeah we can have a like purple spears of light that sort of go through its body and she's going and screeching and you know She's trying to rake her fingernails at Reeves, but it's like she's being sucked backwards out of the room. Nice. Um, so, all of you see this happen. Uh, Ms. Blanchard has some sort of idea of what's just happened, even as she uh, sort of staggers backwards. The, the bile stops flowing from her throat. Uh, now it merely you know, covers her clothing uh, and Cecile's to an extent. What do you all do as this, you know, as this is sort of moment of, of relaxation after this flurry of, of violence? Cecile, what are you doing? Oh, it's simply awful, dear. I think you're haunted. 
There's a ghost in your mansion. You must go and, and think of all the people you've wronged and, and, and if any of them would bear a grudge from beyond the pale. People that I have wronged? The very idea. What could you, what can you mean? Oh, I, I don't know. Families have long histories and shameful secrets. I'm sure something must have occurred some point in your time. And you don't need to tell me what, what happened. Just, just think about how you can make amends. Um, do you want to, like, do you want to roll to see if you can convince her that everything's okay here? Or that, that it's merely a haunting? Uh, yeah, I think I'll do that. All right. Well, it will be the, the night move again. So what are you afraid will happen if you fail? Um, I want to do something different than social scandal. Um, uh, I guess the coven would already know that we're, we're, we're here. Uh, do you want me to come back to you? Do you want to think about it for a yeah, second? Yeah, I think, I think that'd be best. All right. So... Helena, you have successfully driven away um, the witch. Cecile is trying to calm down Mrs. Blanchard somehow. Um, Ms. Reeves looks, you know, a little discomposed, a, a little bloody, but basically okay. Uh, what will you do? Uh, yeah, if there were any, like, cups of tea or anything, then <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hand one to Miss Reeves and, you know, you, you'll be right. You, you okay? And just make sure she's not still suffering from rats or whatever. Ms. Reyes, will you accept the cup of tea that you just made for Mrs. Blanchard? Mm -hmm. uh, she'll take it and then put like a healthy dose of brandy in it and I'll say like I'll be fine and then just like takes a big swig from it as like blood is running down from her cheek wound. Alright. Um, Cecile, did you think about what you're afraid will happen? Uh, yes, I think I'm afraid she might blame, like, Hargrave House for whatever mm. happened in her kitchen. Yes, that's a good one. Um, it's worse than you fear because of her strong social connections. If she puts the word out that, that Hargrave House has done this sort of thing, it's going to make it much harder for you all in future, um, you know, especially if you need to, to investigate any, you know, any of the more upper-class parts of London. Um, so go ahead and roll the night move. Um, with presence, I suppose. Uh, I got a nine. All right. So you, uh, you do it all hold steady, but there's a complication. Can I use the mask of Janice to bump that up to a full success? Yeah. What mask are you going to put on? Uh, the cosmic passage, or the, that's, the, that's the mask of the future. So. Yeah, you can do that. The um. Let's see. The what happens when you mark that one? Uh, oh, yeah, that's cool. All right, so we're not narrating a specific scene now. That's just a, a new move that you've unlocked. That's awesome. Um, all right, so I think that we might end the night phase there. Um, you've had your big action scene. Um, you've collected some information, and probably in the morning you can take some time to think about it and figure out what's really going on here. Um, is everyone happy if we do go to the dawn phase now? Um, all right. Well, actually, we'll take a break now because it's just come up on 11. So let's just come back about nine minutes past the hour and we'll head into the dawn phase. Um, all right. We're all back. Is everyone ready to continue? All right. We will start with the dawn phase. Um, you have returned to Hargrave House. Sorry, I'll keep dropping my pen. Where's it gone? Maybe it's just maybe it's just gone now. The um the sorry, I'm gonna actually climb under my desk. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Um so you're back at Hargrave House. Um in relative safety, you know the magic of the, the covered can't affect you here. The um, one thing that I would point out, oh, well, I guess when we head into the day phase, but you know, I'll just mention it now, is that Ms. Reeves can't trigger the vulnerable move to clear conditions without uh, mother, the mother here. But either of you can.
can trigger it for her if you invite Ms. Reeves to share your vice with you. Um, so just bear in my mind. Ms. Reeves can't ask you to share her voice, vice, but you can ask her to share yours. Um, but that is for the future. Right now we're in the dawn phase. Uh, you collect rewards if a threat was resolved. Um, that won't apply. You answer dawn questions. So these are the kind of XP prompts in your character keeper, just to have a quick look, see if you're getting any XP for any of those. Um, if there's any that you're not sure about, feel free to, to discuss them. Hmm. Just one. Okay. Just one. Um, and mark new elective dawn questions if you want to change any of the ones that you're able to change. Then we will resolve any playbook or custom moves that are resolved during the dawn phase. I'm pretty sure that only Ms. Reeves has one of these. Um, you claim a memento from last night. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and it's an item that I could have reasonably acquired. I think uh, Miss Reeves takes the uh, blood that was knocked out of the witch's mouth. She kind of like manages to collect, thinking like, you know, maybe Dr. Elkabir can like do some examining on it. Who knows what kind of properties it might have. So she has like a small vial of witch's blood. Amazing. Excellent. Um, we resolve any Janus mask prompts that remain unresolved. I don't think we have any of these. Does anyone have any that they still need to narrate? All right. Um, and I just want to get in a couple of details here. So Helena, you rolled a 12 on the information move and you get a mastermind clue for that. Uh, the okay. mastermind clue, um, and there is space on the very left hand side of the threats tab for your mastermind clues. But you notice as you return to Hargrave House that the Morning Chronicles lead story is of a pile of roses dyed sapphire blue that was left right at the door to the Queen's personal chambers in Buckingham Palace. And you know that the colour sapphire blue is connected with Theodora Braithwaite. Um, but according to the story, no one knows who left them there. The other thing that I want to describe, let's see, is a scene that's happening elsewhere in London as the lights, as the, the daylight starts to break. Uh, where are we? There is, sorry. A, a room with some sort of strange party going on. Uh, there are a number of mannequins dressed in finery that have been carefully arranged all over. Um, some of them display a face that has been removed from a human body that has been stretched and pinned over the wax or fabric surface of the mannequins. There is music playing. There is... Uh, live wait staff, not not just mannequins, but there are people with uh, trays carrying drinks around, not really clear who for. We see the string quartet who are playing so furiously, uh, each of their faces wrapped with bandages that are seeping blood. And we see in the corner a surgeon at work uh, over a body uh, strapped down on some sort of hospital-type gurney. And as she or he works furiously, we see Theodora Braithwaite uh, enter this strange gathering, walk quietly towards the surgeon and says to her very quietly, or to him very quietly, I have been following your work with interest. And Sally No-Face turns toward the mastermind and we see that Sally No-Face wears a featureless wooden mask, 
along with the long white coat and black rubber gloves and the scalpel dripping with blood. And we will start the day phase here. Um, that means, just for your reference, that Sally No Face is no longer a threat that you can resolve. She is now a servant of the mastermind and uh, probably someone you'll have to deal with in the future, but no longer an active threat to investigate. The day phase. Uh, I'm not going to present a new threat right now. Um, regular scenes commence, so it's just for you to tell me what you want to do, just like any other game. Um, you are sitting on eight clues for the coven. Their complexity is six. You are welcome to just go straight ahead and try and figure out what's up with the coven, where their grand, final step of the grand ritual will take place, um, or you're welcome to try and round up a couple more clues. Just a reminder that you're not going to be able to roll it more than plus four, so two more clues is the most that you're going to do there. Do we want to have a go? Cecile, yeah. you unlocked a new sort of way that you can collect clues, I think, uh, last night. Do you want to try triggering that? Uh, sure, yes. Um, yes, it's, it's a... The cosmic sorry. passage move? Yes. Uh, when I gaze upon the masterwork in an attempt to uncover something hidden in the world, roll with sensitivity. So, I mean, what would that look like? Would you have to go to the place where your followers endlessly play this song dedicated to your, your glories? Or, you know, can you just hum it and contemplate it in that fashion? Like, what has to happen? Uh... I think I, I probably just uh, start humming to myself in my room and uh, uh, just sort of sort of emanates through the whole house. Like it's not that loud, but for some reason you all hear it. You all can tell I'm doing something with it, uh, and just uh, start like dancing with my eyes closed somehow. Like uh, and then like I snap open them like aha. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, like, without telling us anything about your history together, do the other hunters know about the masterwork? Or is that something that only Cecile and her followers know? Uh, I don't think I hide from the house that I'm pretty old. Like, I, I'll make offhand references to stuff that happened way before I should have been born, the judging from, like, my appearance. <laughs> um... I was wondering, um, like, when she hums that tune, is there, like, a, a string quartet in an art gallery that just play different songs all day as entertainment? But when she hums it, they start playing the same tune because they're her worshippers and they don't even realise sort of thing. They've just got a subliminal... Oh, that's a great idea. I don't think it's quite string quartet. It's not that fancy. But uh, I think, yeah, uh, it, it. there are probably, like, street musicians or just anyone remotely nearby just starts mimicking the same tune and you probably feel an urge to dance too <laughs> oh that's interesting so it's, it's a song that you could dance to i think yeah. i was picturing something slower and more ah, interesting is it racy like what's the song like um surprisingly simple like like uh, it's you know i i have a very like upper class persona mm -hmm. but it's, it's a lot more the sort of thing you'd hear in a uh like lower class tavern a song you could all sing along to and dance to it's yeah a bit earthy that's nice yeah. i like it um all right well roll with sensitivity all right so that's that's a one for me uh oh kind of 10 Nice. Right. So on a 10, you get your choice of a clue or a mastermind clue. Um, what would you prefer? Um, I'll put that to the group. Or do you think mastermind clues would be, would be more useful here? Or No, no, go for, go for a, a coven clue. Maybe you saw something in that house when you were there and you're kind of thinking about it while you're humming the tune and that's why it just sort of clicked. That sounds good. Yeah, I'll go with a, a coven clue, yeah. All right, just bear with me while I do some scrolling in my PDF. Um, uh, 
All right. So I think it's more of a vision. Like it's not something you remember. It's a vision that comes to you as you contemplate the, the masterwork. The vision is a blue door, a, a very particular blue door. If you were to see it again, there's no, no question that you would know it. And that's all you see in the vision, but you know somehow that this door can no longer be walked through no matter what. Um, and that will count as a clue for the coven if you want to add it to the keeper. Okay. Uh, that brings you up to a, a plus three if you can incorporate all those clues for the coven. Um, Helena and Reeves, is there any scenes that either, like what are, what are the two of you doing as Cecile sort of hangs out in her room? Um, Reeves is probably... I mean, after, like, I'm guessing all of the health staff are dancing along to the song, and she's probably exasperated trying to, like, if this is a <laughs> recurring thing, she's probably a little <laughs> used to it by now, and is, like, trying to get people back to work. Um, you know, Cecile's dress that she wore last night is stained, like, keep scrubbing at it. But as she's doing that, she's tapping her feet along to the music, but, like, resisting dancing. Nice. What's Helena doing? I think uh, Helena's going to go to the library, but she doesn't want yeah, Reeves to come with her. She's like, no, no, you, you stay here and take it easy. She's, she had a rough night, so she'll, um, yeah, she'll go to the library, and but like, she'll hear a bit of the song before she leaves, so she's humming it while she's walking through the streets. All right. Um, and when you get to the library, uh, what's the plan? Do you want to ask around you want to you know extend your senses again what will you do uh yeah well i'll ask around first see if anyone you know from the fellowship of whatever they were um <laughs> dreams to, i think yeah fellowship of dreams to you know where did they go and you know dreamers yeah and just look around the esoteric section of the library and All then right. take a deep breath and try and get a vibe for the place well, I heard presence, reason, and sensitivity in there, so I guess roll with whichever one you feel uh, most connected to. Um, I'm going to go presence. I'm just, I'll talk to people first. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, eight. Eight. Okay. So, okay, so you're getting a clue with a complication or cost. The, um, so the, library, the second librarian that you speak to uh, is able to talk to you about what happened, uh, you know, met, met one of the fellowship, um, found her absolutely charming and lovely, um, you know, understands why you would want to learn more about their doings. Um, maybe she even senses something of their 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 aura around you um and she tells you they were very interested in old blueprints of railway stations um, okay that's uh that's all they wanted to look at um, maybe some some other esoterica but that that was the main thing certainly um and as she tells you that uh another librarian walks over and said yes it, it's true uh they asked about some other things, but mostly they were interested in r railway blueprints. Uh, a third librarian walks over and repeats the same information, and then just a member of the public. And before you know it, you're surrounded by this circle, librarians, patrons, whoever they are, and their words start to lose their form. They're no longer speaking... English, it's more like there's just this animalistic bleating all around you from this yeah. circle. I'll, I'll get out of it. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I mean, I'll get you to roll the day move, I think. Um, oh, to... sweet. What are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve? Um, they're like, oh, they're, they're going to try and get me into a, a side room and you know you must see this you must see this under the you know but I, they're actually forcing me to go in there mm -hmm. all right 
Well, roll with an appropriate ability. I would think vitality probably to push past them. Yeah, I got minus one. That's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> to the six. Uh, that's, a five. that's a five. That's a five. So we'll come back and see what happens to Helena in Shit. just a minute. Um, so, Cecile, you finish up your, your song. Um, you have an opportunity to spend some time with Ms. Reeves. Um, you know that Helen has gone out for a while. I think she probably would have left a message saying, you know, she'll be back later, don't, you know, don't wait, something like that. Um, I guess you all go about your business in different ways. Um, would you like to share your advice with Ms. Reeves or is there something else that you'd like to do? Uh, yes, I think I'll, I'll share my advice with Reeves, um, if that's all right. Yeah, I think- What is, what is your advice? Uh, my vice is, uh, extravagant spending, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna take Reeves shopping, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I think I am just sort of, uh, dragging you along and being like, oh, we just saw the most wonderful, uh, curtains at, at, at the house yet last night. We absolutely must get some of those, and, uh, I saw some wonderful fashions over in Paris. We need to get some dresses. I, and you, you should treat yourself. Here, my treat. I'll, I'll get you some... <sighs> Fancy things. <laughs> nice. Um, so the vulnerable move triggers when you have an intimate moment with another hunter while one of you is engaged in your vice. So what is the intimate moment that happens on this shopping trip? How does one of you open up to the other? Um, I think... If, unless you have an idea, I think maybe it's Miss Reeves is always in very, like, dark, simple, um, reserved clothes, you know, very professional, kind of very, like, subdued and that sort of thing. And pretty much most of the trip, like, she's carried around all of your shopping bags and stuff. Um, but at the place where you're, like, you know, you should treat yourself, you know, get something. This reason is just kind of like denying it, like, oh, no, that's, you know, I'll have nowhere to wear it to, that's not necessary, yada, yada. And maybe you pick out like a very um, extravagant, you know, very pretty dress for her and kind of like help her get into it. So she's a little unsure of it and like doesn't know how to put it on herself. And she kind of looks in the mirror and realizes like, she feels pretty for the first time in a long time. Aww. All right. So um, you may each clear an appropriate condition. Um, I don't think Cecile has any, but uh, I know that Reeves does. Um, and because it's your vice, Cecile, you can choose either to stumble on a clue or to invite the other hunter to ask about your past. And then you must answer truthfully but not necessarily completely. I suppose one more clue wouldn't hurt. All right. So if it's a clue, um, you tell us, you tell me what it is. Um, so you can use it for the coven or you're welcome to say that you stumble on a clue um, connecting to figs, pigs. Uh, those are your only options at the moment, I guess. Okay. Uh, I think we're at as many, I guess, Probably don't. The, what? Yeah, you, you've pretty well maxed out the coven. You know, it, it wouldn't hurt to have a spare one to play with, but you're pretty well covered there. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go with uh, figs, pigs then. Uh, I think while we were going around with our extravagant spending, uh, I went with the, like some. Uh, like the sort of people who normally supply gourmet restaurants and basically getting them to supply the house instead and, and picking up some information about like the movement of like rare meats and, and, and stuff relevant to the mm -hmm. figs pigs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and just write that in as a, a clue on figs pigs. Okay. Okay. Back to the library, Helena, the circle of people have grabbed hold of you and are dragging you towards what looks to be some sort of trapdoor leading down beneath the library. 
do you want to put a mask on or do you want to resist some other way? Like, what would you like to do here? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, can I just get physically violent and run out of there or? Well, you, you can try it. You can try it again. Um, so they've got a good grip on you now. Uh, you're doing something risky or facing something you fear, but you can roll the day move. Um, what are you afraid will happen now? Um, yeah, basically this is, you know, uh, they work for the coven and they're going to keep me there until the coven comes or something. Okay. Uh, well, roll again with vitality to see if you, you can get out before it's too late. I've got a thing that says book of ancient language with some blank pages. Can I tap that? And it's like, I, I'm spewing off this ancient Etruscan or something. And it, I'm trying to confuse whatever wavelengths they're on for why they're under there's some sort of hypnosis thing. Sure. That's my, my theory yeah. I'm trying to get. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So roll vitality with advantage. Um, so what's, where's my vitality? I, oh, I got minus one. This is what I did. All right. Um, and then I take one off. So uh, eight, seven. Seven. Okay. So you succeed uh, with a cost or is that right? The keeper yeah. will tell you how your actions would leave you vulnerable and you can choose to back down or go through with it. Um, so you'll get away, but you'll be, you'll, you'll get a condition probably roughed up or something like that. Like you'll be hurt in the scuffle. Are you happy with that? Yep. Yep. You go through it. Okay. Um, so yeah, mark the condition roughed up, but you break away from the circle of people. You rush out. Is that, well, what happens then? You rush out or? Oh, yeah. I'm not worried about decorum at this point. I just run back to the house. Yeah. I mean, I think that what happens is that you run into these two as they're returning from their uh, big shopping trip. Um, <laughs> all three of you notice uh, in the distance a dark, heavy rain cloud centred over Buckingham Palace uh, as you head back inside to figure out what's going on. Fantastic. <laughs> Do you want to take some time to, to try and answer a question here to, to put those yeah, yeah. Let's together let's about the ritual? So the question for the coven is, when and where will the final step of the grand ritual take place? So that's what you're trying to figure out. Because, um, like, the, the first place, it was st clues pointing somewhere else, but... Then we went to the second place and there was like ectoplasm and a witch there. So I think that was it. I think that's going to be the place. That's my argument. So what, what clues are you going to use to support that? All right. Let's try and get as many as bloody possible. <laughs> um, there are a bunch of clues pointing at East London. Was the home in East London? or? Uh, it was not. I think that we tried to. I think that we decided the other week that East London is more like the working class areas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, hang on. I, I, I like what you're, you're saying there. Maybe where they're looking is east. There was a hangman gallows which goes in with the painting. I saw at the second place. Oh, with the rope. Yeah. 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 And so, we... so then you'd be marking what the. the that images. one. Um, the ones looking to the east. Yeah. So I've just marked the eastern ones. Yeah. Are... So the coven are after old blueprints of railway stations. How does that connect? Yeah. So we look for like a place where there was a gallows near a railway that's east of where these houses are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe like the railway station um, was shut down, and so it was boarded up. It's like a blue archway with bricks in it, so that's the blue doorway that'll never be walked through. Nice. Um, we also know that there's something happening with stars, both the sun, which Mr. Barnes can't refer to properly anymore, but also the cats all gathering in a particular place to look at the stars. Um, what do you think that that all speaks to? Hmm. Maybe, yeah, maybe the people at the railway station doing 
you know, fortune telling and astrology and all of that. Is it, do we think it's still a railway station or is it something that was built over a railway station? Uh, I think um, we've been getting that, the tower card. I think that means uh, de destruction or something. So maybe some sort of like burned out or collapsed or destroyed railway station. What about like it was shut down because it was collapsed and so there's like a sinkhole above the railway station where you can like see the stars from down there. Mm. Um, I mean, we could probably leave it at that. We've got a good and leave some clues for the next one or whatever. Well, I, I don't know. That's only going to bring you up to plus one. I'm dying for you to explain what Mr. Bain's small extra body part has to do with all this. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you want to roll at 2d6 plus 1, go ahead. Or if you want to try and incorporate some more. What does the purplish goo has to do with this uh, old, abandoned, demolished, collapsed yeah. railway station? I want to work the body part in, but I don't know. The, the only thing that comes to mind is maybe he, he thought he was an animal during the seance, and afterwards he, he drew like a, a dog's tail if he thought he was a dog during the seance sort of thing. And... Um, the stars they're looking at, it's the dog star. Ah, oh, mm. nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can just explain the clues as not actually being relevant. Like, you, you can explain them without incorporating them per se if you say, you know, actually that has to do with this other thing or mm. something like that. Mm. So I think that that gets you up to a plus two roll. Um, yeah. Do you want to go with plus two, or do you want to try and work in the purple ectoplasm? This is the only question we have for this one, right? Yeah. We don't. So, I mean, may as well use them if we got them. Yeah. Also, I think this is like a really atmospheric place to have a climactic scene, so I really want you to roll a success mm -hmm. when you roll this move. So the more, the better from my point of view. Uh, the ectoplasm... I'm not sure if I can explain the, the purplish part, but the, the goo could be that it's uh, like old rail grease or old train grease, something they'd use to grease up the, the mechanisms and, and, and the, all the mechanical parts there. I mean, maybe it's just something like they're collecting this purple goo as part of their ritual. They're like, you know, collect. there's a vat in the place that they've chosen where they're collecting it. Uh, a combination of old railway grease and ectoplasm and blood and other terrible things that we shan't name. Yeah, like, like that. these three places are actually preparation sort of rituals, and then they're going to use a lot more of this goo at the actual place sort of thing. Oh, yeah, they've harvested the purple goo from the minds of the people they've conducted the seances for. Um, all right, and what does it mean? that Reginald Barnes now only refers to the sun as the day star. Does that just connect back as well to the sinkhole that you can look up at the sky through? Or is there a, a further meaning? Um, yeah, I think it's to do with the sinkhole because it, it changes your perspective. When you're down there, down on the earth, looking up at the sun, it, it's, it's not just, oh, it's daytime. It's like, no, no. It, it's your because it's a really deep sink, sinkhole so it's like this is your one avenue of light in a world of darkness sort of thing nice um so that gets you up to your max so that's 2d6 plus four um i like to invite a guest star to be the one that rolls for this because it can be anyone so uh kyle if you're ha if you're okay with that let's have a 2d6 plus four roll all right 13. Nice. Do you get something extra if you answer on a 12 plus? Oh my god, on a 12 plus, the mastermind will reveal themselves while the hunters are pursuing the opportunity. Um, so you are right. Sorry. We, let, we talked a lot about where the final step of the ritual will take place, but part of the question was when. I assume for dramatic reasons that the answer must be tonight, right? Like, does anyone disagree? Oh, yeah. um, all right. So you know that tonight you have the opportunity to stop the ritual 
They will be trying to use this purple goo in some fashion, but you're ready to, to step in and try and stop them. I, I'm inclined here to just move into the dusk phase and then on to, to stopping the ritual, but is there anything anyone else, anyone wants to do before we get to that? Anything else in the day phase? Not that I can think of. All right. Well, let's go back to the dusk phase then. So, in the dusk phase, um, we resolve any playbook moves that are resolved during the dusk phase. So, Ms. Reeves? Um, yeah, my dusk one, I remove a marked item from another hunter's personal quarters, add it to my own. Let's see. So, unless we grab one from... Oh, actually, you were using some. Uh, maybe the... Uh, cameo pendant necklace that has the picture of someone else. It was like the picture of the witch um, after banishing it. You notice like there's a crack kind of running through the cameo pendant and like part of the face has chipped off and you would think it would be like the back of the pendant, but it's actually someone else's face under there. Nice. So I will now ask, uh, sorry, nobody else has a, a move for this phase, do they? I don't think so, all right. Um, so I'll paint the same question about Hargrave House. This evening, as you prepare for your assault on the ritual, you have gathered in the library. Of all the rooms in Hargrave House, none feel more unstuck than this one. As you enter the library, what do you see or experience that feels a little off. Uh, Helena, can I get you to go first? Um, oh, let's go Ghostbusters. There's vertical book stacking, just at random nice. spots on the shelves. <laughs> and yeah, I think, it, no, I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Mr. Aves? Um, I think the, we'll say like the record player will just sometimes um, turn itself on or activate itself without any record in there. Like it did it when Cecile's song started playing. It just kind of dropped down with like nothing on the player and just started playing music. Um, and it's always like somehow connected to what's being studied. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Cecile? Uh, maybe shadows never quite look right in here. They always seem a little, like, the angle seems a little off or the, 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 a little darker or starker than you would think. Mm -hmm. nice. uh, That's good. Um, so... The next thing is that you each say what your hunter will be doing during the upcoming night phase. Um, so I assume that you'll all be confronting the, the coven to try and stop the ritual, but um, if you have anything more specific that you want to propose, uh, Helena? No, that's pretty much the top of my agenda, but um, I will, ch you know, check in and, you know, are you both all right? This, this is going to be dangerous. Dangerous but exciting. I'm sure it will go smashing. <laughs> and Reeves is just kind of looking like stressed and frazzled at that and like takes another swig of her brandy. <laughs> kind of imagining, because I think she's practiced with Jim Fletcher like shooting rifles a few times. So I don't know how it works in this game as far as like bringing equipment not in your personal quarters, but like she probably like has a rifle and like a little bag of bullets that she's like bringing with her since this is kind nice. of like the big guns yeah uh, i think you can just do that like you're, you're just gonna use that as fictional positioning for the the moves that you might make yeah. um all right well i think we're ready for the night phase then uh we'll start well i'll start by uh 
introducing an unseen prompt. The let's see. I think that I would like us to do the Prison Hulk at Woolwich, which starts at 11i on the London at Night tab, if you want to find that one. Moored near the industrial town of Woolwich are a number of hollowed out warships that serve as temporary prisons for convicts set to be transferred to Australia and other penal colonies. One of these prison hulks is the HMS Bellorophon, now called the HMS Captivity. A too young cook is walking above and below deck, passing out the evening's portion of hard biscuits and pea soup. So as we open the night phase, uh, Blake, I'll get you to read the first of those questions, and then because it's paint the scene, I'll get each of you to give it an answer. Okay, so how do we know the captivity is a nightmare of filth and desperation? Um, I think there's like a, a family in rags just sort of huddled together. They've got, you know, no pillows, no bags, no other stuff. They've just got each other in rags sitting in the corner and it's dark and dank in there. Uh, Reeves? Um, I think along the walls, whether it's like rust stains or, you know, other stains there's just constant like by windows like running stains running down or um you know it just looks like filth is just kind of like running down on the wall and like dripping down yeah uh cecile uh i think uh the the, the crew of the ship go armed everywhere like just on the you know they know the prisoners have nothing to lose and they're just they're constantly on guard, constantly ready for any kind of trouble. Nice. Um, so you have all gathered. Uh, it's late. You've gathered near this sinkhole uh, over the abandoned railway station. Um, you probably know of a few different ways in. I guess you can, you know, abseil down from the top of the sinkhole, but there's also you know, old entrances through the sewers, through some collapsed tunnels that you could make your way through, um, different ways you might approach. But as you approach the site, um, all of you find yourself dwelling on terrible things that have happened to you in your lives, these dark memories that just flare up in your minds. And at first, each of you separately, you know, just takes this for one of those things, you know, you're remembering something unpleasant. But you realize that the, the more you try and advance towards this site, the thicker those memories get and the harder it is to make progress. And all of you come to the realization that this is, in fact, some sort of magical barrier that is there to repel anyone trying to advance on the ritual. What do you do? Wondering if I can, like, dispel it or whatever. Um, do, 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 do. Banish a spirit or curse, I guess it's kind of like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to try my rights of salt and smoke to... Yeah. I mean, I think that, that you're, you are unsure whether this will work. It's not like anything that you've, you've banished before, but you can you definitely give it a go. So, uh... Tell us about the offerings to the dark entities that you make. Um, I'm probably expected to have to do a ritual, so I would have got like a bag of rats from the settler. And I, you just collected yeah. them when Miss Reese was coughing them up the other day. <laughs> Cheers for that. <laughs> <laughs> poor bugger, poor Reeves. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've, I've carried them and I'll, I'll stake out three and I'll... Um, I did ancient Greek before, so I'll, you know, call upon the power of uh, Hecate and Zeus and Artemis to um, yeah, give us strength and help us find a, a clear way through the, the darkness that besets us. All right. Go ahead and roll with sensitivity. And... Uh, 
Lives. Um, uh, so on a 10 plus, the magic works without further cost. Um, all of you feel the memories fade, uh, or at least the intensity with which they force themselves upon you. Um, Reeves and Cecile, how, how do you advance as this, this magic loses its hold on you? How do you want to enter the, the ritual space? Um, I think Reeves is definitely has like her rifle out and a pointed forward and is probably quietly muttering what uh, Jim Fletcher had told her to do. So she's like, you know, muttering to herself, like keep a firm grip, breathe in, breathe out, calm breaths in like almost a slight caricature of like an American accent, trying to just remember like what he has told her. Uh, Cecile, what about you? Um, I've got a shotgun and I'm just, you know, kind of, uh, just, just marching forward, looking around, just almost eager for some kind of confrontation and just sort of humming my merry little tune to myself. How is, how is Cecile with a shotgun? Um, is it a shotgun or like an old, an old musket or something? Uh, no, I think, I, I think she, she, uh, shelled out for a new uh, fancy shotgun, and uh, I'd say she's she's enthusiastic, but she's not particularly skilled. All right. Um, well, now I have to ask: Is Helena also like conventionally armed, or relying on her? Uh, like, she's got her athame, athame, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, she's going to stab someone with that if she has to. <laughs> All right. Look, I think this would be a good spot for us to take a break and then we'll come back and play through uh, the, the rest of the night phase. So let's just come back on the hour, if that's okay. All right, is everyone ready to continue? Cool. So first up, I will get uh, Miss Reeves to uh, read and answer the second uh, prompt, unseen prompt for the prison hawk at Woolwich. Yeah. Uh, so narrate a scene in which we see the convicts at leisure. How do they entertain themselves? How do they maintain their connection to God and society, if at all? I mean, I think there's kind of like a illegal gambling ring going on, but, you know, they don't have any, like, dice or anything like that, so they've kind of... They've found the most, like, approximate stuff they can, so they might have you know, a cardboard box from some food that they had used that they just scratched out, you know, the pips for dice on. And they're kind of rolling that and betting and just trading back and forth, like, um, scraps of paper with, like, ones written on it to kind of denote value amongst them. And they're bartering at that. And so there's a bunch of the convicts kind of around in a circle with more kind of standing around them. And they're all you know, gambling at that. Um, we're off to the side, kind of trying to maintain their connection. The uh, huddled family that Lake had mentioned, you know, they might be praying back and forth to each other um, as much as they can, just trying to, you know, stay connected amongst themselves and stay connected to, to God in their own way. Um, so I think that's kind of how they're at leisure <laughs> such as it is yeah. all right so the three of you have arrived crouched in the shadows at the edge of this ritual space um the remains of the former railway station all around you partially collapsed um, you can see the train tracks still um, you can see the moonlight and the starlight shining down through this big sort of opening in the ground above you. Uh, and the light shines down and strikes the circle of the coven. Uh, four of them, all of them dressed in black, veiled. Uh, all of them grown somehow for in, the, in the course of this ritual, standing now, what, eight feet tall, hovering slightly above the ground, glowing with eldritch energy. They surround a, a huge cauldron, I guess you'd say, of purple goo that bubbles and churns as they chant. 
what will you do? Helena, the others may maybe look to you for some guidance. <laughs> I was hoping they'd start shooting, actually, but okay. Uh, well, tell them that, then. Uh, yeah, I'll say maybe start shooting now. <laughs> Who's going to get their gun out first? Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. So this will be the night move. When you do something risky or face what you fear, name what you're afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerves. All right. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot the cauldron because, I mean, if, if they want the goo in the cauldron, putting a hole in the cauldron will probably do something they don't want. Okay, uh, that's cool. What are you afraid will happen if it doesn't work? Uh, that I will set loose, like, uncontrolled arcane energy that just causes chaos for everyone. Hmm. It's worse than you fear because how is it worse than you fear? Um, it's worse than you fear because the cauldron is not only containing the energy inside it, uh, it's also stopping the purple goo inside from sucking the ectoplasm from each of your bodies. Uh, if that becomes loosed, it will begin to siphon some similar energy from all of you. Fantastic. Uh, you can choose to back down or go through with it. You want to take that shot? Uh, yeah, I'll take the shot. If you go through with it, roll with an appropriate ability. Um, I think previously for the American, we've established that composure is the ability for shooting. If you want to use something else, you're willing to. You're welcome to make a case for it. I was thinking vitality. So vitality is more about like something physical, like something active. Um, can if you I want to like, you, have you got like a, a cool one liner? You could go for presence and stand in the moonlight, and you know. <laughs> Great plan. Yeah, I think I'm going to just like, if you want to... mark. But... Oh, sorry, go on. Uh, no, I think I'll just like uh, march out into the the light and like you're like, ha ha! I knew I would find you here, but be wary for your villainous plans are at an end. And and while they're distracted, I shoot. Nice. Uh, yeah, you can use presence for that. Uh, Twelve. Nice. Um, so you on a 12 on the night move, you get some extra benefit or advantage. So I'll come back to you, but just think about what extra benefit or advantage you'd like. Um, I'll also think about whether there's anything I can suggest. Reeves, are you also shooting? Yeah, I think uh, Cecile's able to like get the first up shot off right away because she steps forward and like shouts that and Reeves just kind of like takes a moment to look over at her kind of a guess like she's just you know announcing herself and everything and then puts the rifle up to her shoulder after that and takes a shot at probably like the closest switch to her that she can yeah, yeah. what are you afraid will happen if you fail um i'm afraid that you know the gun's not going to do as much damage as like she's seen a gun do before and like it'll barely hurt the witch yeah it's worse than you fear uh i don't know they could even be immune to that to, to physical harm yeah. go ahead and roll the night move okay i will do composure uh not reeves wouldn't like step forward and call out any of the witches or anything so that is a seven. Nice. So you do it all hold steady, but there is a complication or cost, and I'll describe what it is, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Helena, guns are popping off. You're still lurking in the shadows. Um, what will you do? Um, I kind of feel like I've done enough rituals. I'm going to try and flank and sneak around and, and just try and get my FMA and, FMA and stab one of the witches. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, no, anyone... no, I'm going to try and push one into the cauldron. Oh, nice. So it, it, it sucks their life sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I guess that would be vitality, I'm thinking. Cause it's I guess so. Cool. What are you afraid will happen if you fail? Uh, some of the goo will get on me and I'll get drained a bit as well. 
Oh, it's worse. They will drag you right into the cauldron with them. The uh, Go <laughs> ahead and roll with vitality. Oh, sorry. You have the opportunity to back down if you want. No, shit, no. Okay. <laughs> no offense. Uh, uh, eight. An eight. Okay. So you, uh, you do it or hold steady, but there is a complication or cost. Okay. So we'll come back to... Uh, those outcomes, but first we will narrate the next, we'll deal with the next unseen prompt. So, um, Cecile, can you read that third prompt for the unseen and then answer it? Narrate a scene in which we see a convict being punished by a ship's officer. What did the convict do? How is the punishment being carried out? Uh... I don't think the convict did anything. I think mm -hmm. the ship's officer just felt, you know, felt the convicts were getting uppity, picked a random one and had them flogged to uh, intimidate the rest. Yeah. Um, nice. So as we go back to uh, the ritual, the grand ritual, Cecile, you got a shot off. You've put a hole in the side of the cauldron. Um, the purple goo begins to leak and froth out through the hole. Um, some of it, uh, Blake, I'm just going to pay off your complication here. Some of it sprays up on Helena uh, and you take the condition arcane burn. Um, and we'll come back to, to like narrate the outcome for Helena of what that looks like. Um, Cecile, you also get some extra benefit or advantage here. Um, do you want to suggest something or do you want me to? Um, if you have a suggestion. Well, I, I think you take out one of the witches. So you shoot this shot in the cauldron, uh, the fluid starts to spurt out, uh, and the, the, per the person who takes the brunt of that is the nearest witch, sprayed all over in this liquid, um, and it, it, it's causing much more severe burns to her than the small amount is to Helena. In fact, in a very Wizard of Oz-like fashion, she screams <laughs> that she's melting uh, as her flesh begins to bubble and pucker and she sinks into a pool on the floor. Sounds great. What do you do next? There are still three of these witches. Uh, one of them, uh, Helena, is grappling. Uh, I think... Okay, Cecile is used to being one of the tougher people on the team, so she's going to try to, like, you know, be big and distracting to, you know, dis uh, distract the, the witches from the, the, the more fragile people. So just standing in a relatively prominent spot, just firing again at and again into the coven. Uh, I mean, if she hits one of them, great, but mo mostly just being distracting and, and yeah. Well, I think that's definitely something risky because, uh, you know, at least one of the witches is going to come for you as you do that. So what are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve? Uh, that... Uh, I want to say that, like, one of the... Uh, that, that Helena or Reeves would get hurt, but I don't want to put the consequence on them. Uh if that's what you're afraid of, that's okay. I mean, okay. you can always mitigate these consequences by using your mask, so it's not like you're actually inflicting that consequence. Um, sorry, do you mean you're afraid they'll get caught by a stray shot or you're afraid they'll get hurt by a witch? Or what? what is the fear? Uh, afraid that, like, I won't be able to... That, afraid that the witch will hurt them. Yeah. Um, it's worse than you fear because... The witches now don't intend to hurt them directly, but to take control of them and use them as marionettes against you to, like, control them and bring you down. Uh, go ahead and roll. Well, I, I, again, think that this is probably composure as you just sort of spray the, the gunfire around, uh, unless you want to narrate it some other way. Uh, that sounds good. All right. Well, go ahead and roll with composure. Uh, nice. Uh, ten. On fire. Um, so you do what you intended or hold steady. So I don't think you're hitting any of them, but you're laying down this fire that's making it harder for them all to move around, harder for them to concentrate on the magic that they're wanting to do, things like that. 
Uh, Miss Reeves, I think that you, is this right? You had taken a shot at one of the witches and you had rolled a, a seven to nine. So uh, yes, yep. uh, you hit one of them and there was a complication or cost. Um, so I think that's right. You have hit one of them with the rifle, um, but that hasn't been enough to, to kill her. So she's turned towards you now and is flying through the air directly at you. Um, what do you want to do? Um, kind of realizing that like bullets don't seem to be that expen- that successful, but you know, Cecile had a lot of luck with like getting you know the bubbling liquid on them or like getting them in the vault she's gonna just kind of take the rifle and basically use the butt of it to try and hit the witch and push the witch back what are you afraid will happen if you fail um that pretty much the witch will overpower her and like you know get on her um use her as like a marionette against the seal that sort of thing um, it's worse than you think because she's actually going to give you the mark of the beast if you don't beat her back now. Uh, go ahead and roll. I mean, I guess probably vitality, maybe composure. Okay. Vitality sounds good to me. Uh, nine. All right. So you do it all hold steady, but there's a complication or cost. So we'll come back to that as well. Um, Helena, you had successfully thrown one of the witches into the the cauldron. Um, You yourself have been burnt by the the roiling liquids inside. Um, You can see that uh, Reeves is fairly successfully beating one back towards the cauldron. Um, One of them, Cecile, has completely taken out. So what do you want to do? There's at least one more who is so far unhurt, unharmed. No, I'm going to run at her, try and take her out. With the uh, Athame or by throwing her into the cauldron as well? or Yeah, why not? I'm doing a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, just try and grab her and throw her in. All right. What are you afraid will happen if you lose your, if you fail? Um, yeah. Um, well, uh, do they have a fire under this cauldron or is it just... I, I imagine they do. Yeah, maybe, maybe like um, my dress catches on fire because I didn't really dress for the occasion. <laughs> I just noticed there's a lot of... Um... No, I, I'm afraid she's going to knock me out and take me off and, yeah, use me as a marionette or something. Do some witchy yeah. crap on me. It's worse than you fear because the uh, the burn on your arm wants to be reunited with the rest of the purple goo and it's going to try and pull you in. <laughs> oh, I'll wait. Go ahead and roll, I mean, again, probably vitality. Uh, yeah, I can't really argue anything else. All right, let's go. Mm, right. Seven. Fantastic. Um, so a success, but with a complication or cost. Let's uh, play. Let's have the last of the uh, unseen prompts. So, uh, Helena, can I get you to read and answer the last of those? Um, so, narrator seen which we see conflict, finding comfort and companionship. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe it's the one that was just um, flogged. One of the other ones. You know, sort of says, you know, come and sit with me and they'll get like a, a, a bit of a damp cloth. It's got seawater on it, but, and, you know, they just sort of dab the wounds and gently give them a hug and just talk to them. And, you know, it'll be all right. You'll, you'll pull through. We'll, we'll get through this. It just, it's just generally there for them. Nice. So, Helena, as you throw that. This, another witch into the cauldron you see her start to melt into that whatever's in there but you also see uh, almost like it's reflected in the surface an image of London just beset and overcome by vampires you see the vampire apocalypse unfolding and you realise that 
the magic has already started and that you need to do more than just take out these witches. So Reeves is still fighting with one of them, but you've got to do something now to stop this magic. What will you do? Sorry, you're muted. Okay. I've got... Is there anything else in the sinkhole, like bits of railway stuff or? There's absolutely, like there's lots of old debris. Um, anything that you think you would find down here, I, I'm probably happy for you to. Yeah, just any sort of metal objects, I'll start chucking them in the cauldron. I'm trying to pollute the the cauldron so it stops yeah. fueling that. Um, yeah, maybe some of those out. old chunks of iron would disrupt the magic. Yeah, yeah, any, anything I can yeah. typically pick up, just keep shoving them in. All right, uh, what are you afraid will happen if you fail? Um, yeah, I just, it, it, it's too late. Mm -hmm. And the um, vampires will come get us because the cauldron's told some nearby to come protect it sort of thing. I, I mean, it's worse than you think because what this magic will do if it's successful is turn everyone with the slightest psychic sensitivity in London into a vampire and you are the closest to the cauldron. So you yeah. will be the first to turn, and the fur that will be the, the beginning of the end for everyone. Uh, so go ahead. What I guess you can roll maybe composure or sensitivity for this, or what are you thinking? I think because I noticed this ritual was, you know, fueling the other, the, the transformation and the other psychics and stuff, then yeah, sensitivity, I think, um, I sort of stopped shoving stuff in just for a second, took a deep breath, and oh shit! <laughs> All right, let's see if we can. Oh, ten. Nice. Um, well, so you get to describe what it looks like. What happens as you block the magic? Um, yeah, I just keep piling the chunks of metal debris in the um, cauldron. Um, the two remaining witches, I think there are, sort of hiss and snarl at me because they, they, you know, they're aware of the, the flow of the magic's been blocked. I think it's just one left now. I think uh, you guys keeping track, right? I think there's just the one that Reeves is beating back, but yeah, she definitely yeah. like howls and snarls at you. Um, she is screaming about how you could have been the first of the, greatest event in human history and now you'll just die like all the others un, uh, unremembered and unmourned um, Ms. Reeves the complication that you take as you beat her back towards the cauldron is that the laceration in your cheek starts to bubble uh, starts to burn and you now also take the condition mark of the beast uh, a tiny black 666 that appears on your cheek where the laceration was uh, or, or just above the laceration. Cecile, you see that Helena is doing some magic stuff. It seems like it's working. Reeves is beating back the last of the witches and that seems like it's working. What do you want to do? Um... Go help with the last witch. I think I'll just run up behind her and, and whack her with the butt of the, the, the rifle. The two of you are just going to beat this witch into the cauldron. Okay. There's a moment as she sinks into the cauldron where her veil is thrown up over her face. And what you see in her face will haunt you for a long, long time. But you have defeated the coven and their ritual has been aborted, the vampire apocalypse will not come to London this day. What do you, uh, what do you say to each other in this, in this moment of triumph? Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm crying and I'm looking at reason saying, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. And I don't think Reeves like, fully realizes yet and just kind of like wipes her cheek like right over the 666 and it's just kind of like what do you mean we we beat him that's 
this is a celebration or whatever. And like, you know, it takes a swig of brandy and like offers yeah, something well, to you. Sounds good. Jill. So, but, yeah, I don't think she'd have a mirror or, or anything on her. So I think she'd just say, we'll, we'll, we'll get home safely. Let's thank you. Thank you very much. So as you come back to the surface, you know, you climb up out of this old sinkhole, this, uh, you know, ruined railway station. Um, there's still this, like, purple light glowing up out of the sinkhole that illuminates everything in this odd eldritch colour um, that will fade. You see a handful of figures who are standing at the top there watching you emerge. Uh, Helena, you're probably the only one who recognises them. You see Theodora Braithwaite. You see her daughter, Tatiana Braithwaite. You see her tweed-clad servant. Um, the other, you know, Reeves and Cecile certainly recognise, you know, an upper-class, uh, probably mother and daughter, that's probably evident, uh, and their servant. Um, do you stop to talk to them at all, or...? Is it just back to Highgrave House now? Um, I, I just say, hell of a night. <laughs> and smile at Theodora. I don't think I actually met the daughter, so. Uh, no, you, but you've danced with Theodora. Yeah. She says <laughs> that she is um, extremely grateful for your assistance with the coven. Their apocalypse would have been most inconvenient. And there's something about the way that she says their apocalypse. Yeah, that's I've got to take it. yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I need an explain yeah. my bit. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just smile and sort of, you know, we must go rest. Um, ha have a good night. All right. Um, do either Reeves or Cecile say anything to uh, to the Braithwaites? Uh, not to the Braithwaite's, but like as we're walking away, Reeves is just kind of like grabbing Helena's sleeve, like their apocalypse, their apocalypse. Did you hear how she said that? Just kind of like already having a mental breakdown. <laughs> I, I thought they were potential allies, but perhaps not. Uh, are, you, are you a right, Cecile? I'm, I'm just dandy. There's. Always something going on in this town, isn't there? Yes, it, it's, it's it's never a dull moment. Um, you did some good shooting back there. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. So back at Hargrave House, we'll start the dawn phase. Uh, you, first of all, get to collect rewards if a threat was resolved, and it was. So let me just quickly find the rewards that you can choose here. Um... So uh, I might just say them because it's quicker than copying them out. Um, one of the choices is uh, a memento from the investigation. If you choose that one, you ask another hunter what it is and then add it to your personal quarters. Um, or there are two specific mementos that you can choose. One of them is a rosary made of tiny animal skulls and finger bones. And the other is a copy of the sixth and seventh book of Moses, a grimoire. Uh, Cecile, since you're not going to join us again, it's unfortunately not very <laughs> relevant for you to uh, take a reward. But uh, first of all, Helena, um, this is, you know, the carbon's been weighing on you for a while, so I feel like you should get first first dibs on the, the spoils. Um, the, the, I, I like the rosemary. I just thought, does Reeves want to grab some of the uh, that purple ooze for the 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 mother? You know, making it maybe that can be used in making the kid or something. Ooh, oh, well, Reeves you. also gets to take a memento just from her regular move. Um, so okay. uh, a few options. There. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah, I will. I'll say I take. You know, some of the purple ooze as part of my dawn move. And then as part of the reward, um, I'll say, I'll take the memento that like the other hunters can kind of describe. 
right. Well, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to get Cecile uh, or Kyle if you feel like it. Um, so, what memento does Reeves take away from the the ritual? Uh... How about uh, maybe one of the... Wait, no, we destroyed all the witches. We wouldn't be able to get anything off their bodies, would we? Sure. Uh, I mean, their bodies pooled on the ground, you know. If you want to collect something from them, maybe. Uh, I was thinking maybe, like, uh, uh, a very detailed map of, like, the London, the tunnels, sewers, trains, that sort of thing. Nice. A very detailed map of the London Underground. Um, and, I mean, do you, do you want to collect a memento here, Cecile? Because you're, enti you're entitled to a reward. Uh, I kind of like the skull rosary thing. That was kind of cool. Well, wait, sorry, I think Helena took the rosary. Oh, Is that right? Oh. No, that's all right. She, she wants it. I'm, I'm just happy they're gone. So she wants uh, it. That's okay. I'll take the books of Moses then, sorry. <laughs> So Helena is going to get the rosary and Cecile is going to take the books of Moses. All right. So now you answer your Dawn questions. So again, um, just take a moment. If you have any that you're not sure about, um, feel free to uh, ask about them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I got one. Okay, cool. I get to choose an advancement. Um, hmm. Okay. I mean, I what, think it might make sense that we might finish up early today because starting a new threat here seems a bit like this, the timing seems a bit strange. Um, so that's okay with people. We might just finish up with the dawn phase. So if you want some time to think about what advancement you'll take, um, get that ready for next time. All right. Well, um, I took the, the advancement familiar. Uh, I'm, no. thinking, I'm thinking there's a cat that's been around Hargrave House forever, and after we defeated the coven, it decides it actually likes me. I it's love named that. Xerxes, because it's a Persian cat. We don't know how old it is, but yeah, it's decided it likes me after we've defeated the coven. I love that. Uh, I'm excited to see what Xerxes can do uh, in the future. Um, if either if anyone wants to mark new dawn questions, you can do that here. Um, and Reeves, we already resolved your dawn phase move. You're going to take some purple goo as a memento. Yep. So. That, I think, is where we'll leave it. Um, if it's okay, I'll just end the recording and then we'll do a quick round of stars and wishes. Um, thanks so much for playing with us today, Kyle. Mm -hmm.